When the Soviet Union imploded in 1989, some dared imagine the Earth on the brink of a new order of peace. But while mutual destruction had been averted, human nature had not changed. The great men of the Earth still sought what they regarded as greatness, power over others. Secular mindset says that with the right technique and application of expertise and force, humans can be reshaped. Well, did people magically become better after 1989? Today, 35 years later, the estimated defense market for the U.S. this year is $617 billion. Quote, greater than the cumulative defense spending of countries like China, Saudi Arabia, Russia, the United Kingdom, India, France, Japan, Germany, and South Korea. The internet is a two-edged sword. Australian journalist Julian Assange recognized this long ago. In democracies, or the pseudo-democracies that we are evolving into, Wars are a result of lies. The internet has become the most important device for revealing the truth, uh, at least since the beginning of the printing press. It has become the number one antidote to TV. Democracies are always lied into war. The Iraq war was a result of lies. The increase in involvement in the United States in Vietnam was a result of the Gulf of Tomkin inc incident, another lie. It's not just lies by intelligence analysts, it's lies by the big media machine. And what is in the big media machine? Well, it's, it's the various institutions that get too comfortable and too close to the table of power, the very table that they are meant to be reporting on and policing and getting into the historic record. Assange was saying that we cannot blindly trust the universities, the news organizations, or the religious organizations of the world. Humans fallen, humans deranged, humans damaged and warped seek power. The best humans, apart from God's intervention, are destroyers. There is no society anymore. What there is, is a transnational security elite that is busy carving up the world using your tax money. We must form our own networks of strength and mutual value, which can challenge those strengths and self-interested values of the warmongers in this country and in others that have formed hand in hand an alliance to take money from the United States, from every NATO country, from Australia, and launder it through Afghanistan, launder it through Iraq, launder it through Somalia, launder it through Yemen, launder it through Pakistan, and wash that money in people's blood. Much of the violence and murder in our world today arises from the calculations of merchants of industry. Are Christians actually deeply informed about who is right and who is wrong in the parade of war and murder? Weapons manufacturers have lined the pockets of military industrial merchants, and this traffic has accelerated for most of our lives. Do you really have the details behind the start of the Iraq-Kuwait war or the start of the Ukraine-Russia war? Yes, governments and news media have assured us that one side is good and the other is evil. Basically, one side is usually super good and the other side is dramatically, uh, supremely evil. Well, and then comes the plunder. Question, can we trust them? Let me share something I believe, and it's summed up in these words. Satan delights in war, for it excites the worst passions of the soul, and then sweeps into eternity its victims steeped in vice and blood. It is his object to incite the nations to war against one another, for he can thus divert the minds of the people from the work of preparation to stand in the day of God. Christians should be wary of the stories we are told. Human authorities always provide a justification for countermanding God's command. Thou shalt not kill. Now, the Bible tells us there are certain occasions when killing is justified, but those who are Christians should avoid being supporters of war. At the very least, 
we should review very, very carefully what is story and what is fact before even tentatively supporting military adventures. War sweeps human beings made in God's image into premature death. Soldiers are morally scarred by violence. Often they die before reaching moral clarity about who they are meant to be in Christ. Civilians are killed cheaply as collateral damage. Revelation chapter 18 lists many things the merchants of the earth will be selling right before God ends this present order. Included in the list, well, it says right here, bodies and human lives. Verse 13, are not those who manufacture arms, who recruit soldiers, who manufacture public approval for war, acting contrary to the selfless example given us in the life of Jesus? Even a journalistic hero like Julian Assange, who as far as I know does not come at these questions from a Christian perspective, is able to see the depravity of the merchants of the earth, merchants in weapons manufacture, and the influence of public opinion, and how such wars are actually the crime of murder executed to experience the momentary illusion of power. It is long past time that Christians refuse to sustain the military industrial merchants God will very soon destroy. These merchants are teamed with Babylon in the present world order and in its inhuman dealing of death. Let each individual rethink exactly what they're supporting, become more human, and as the prophet Isaiah urged us, cease to do evil, learn to do good. I'm Larry Kirkpatrick for Horizon Watch. Hey, we come out with these short presentations uh, every few weeks, and we put out this newsletter, the Horizon Watch newsletter. You can just trigger it on your phone with your QR code reader, and boom, and you've got the video right there. Something that isn't commonly talked about maybe so much in the news. So subscribe over here if you're interested, and we'll see you around.